Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we have something special. We have Sean here, and what do you do, Sean? I am president, owner, operator of Trailforce Off Road. That's awesome, and I know you guys had issues with shipping delays with other companies, but you guys are, it seems like you guys are back on track. Is that, is that right? Yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we got, we got hit pretty hard right after the move during the move, uh, most of our shop got stuck in Wyoming for three weeks when a truck broke down and, you know, fixing that and the delays. And that was a huge expense. And then we had issues with steel prices and vendors not shipping products and all kinds of stuff. So, you know, and then I got COVID and the fiance got COVID and mm -hmm. it was this perfect storm of if it could go wrong, it yeah. went wrong. And um, that was kind of, pretty much Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's, that whole time frame was just problem solving one thing after another. And we finally got clear of all of that and were able to, to play some really serious catch up, um, start building our inventory back up, start dropping our lead times. Um, this month alone, we've gone from on average, maybe 140, 150 rolling orders to maybe 20. Um, you know, wow. open at any one time. We're shipping, yeah. most of our steering kits and bumpers are now shipping one to two days, you know, after oh, wow. you place an order. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we're, we're really excited to get, to get inventory back in the shop, to get on top of lead times, to be able to handle people's rush orders. Um, and getting in that position is also allowing us to, you know, get back to developing, you know, new products, new components, look at new vehicles, do that kind of stuff. Yeah, so your turnaround time for parts now, it's less than a week, right? For most, we still have a couple items that we're waiting on, like, you know, a big batch of inventory to come in. But for the most part, a lot of the products are shipping really quick. Um, we're also making huge improvements on the website so that if you're interested in a product, it will tell you how many we have in the shop ready to go. Oh, the quantity. Yeah. So, that's great yeah. So like if you go look at a track bar or a bumper kit or something, yeah. it'll tell you they have four of this bumper configuration on the shelf. And as long as we have it, it's going to go out, you know, like I said, one to two days later. Okay. That's really good to hear, especially for people who are trying to buy stuff at the moment. I know a lot of right. people are kind of scared to order stuff because of the wait times. But now that you're back on track, I say go, go for it. Go buy it. Go buy that steering kit, the bumper, whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that's great. Yeah, and I mean, and we're, we're, our goal right now is, you know, to, to keep that situation. So we start running low of something, you know, we're going to start making moves to, to order more, build more, depending on what that product is, so that we're always going to have that inventory on hand. Um, and that, that includes the WJ components because that is a, a concern that that people have asked me multiple times they see it happen with the big companies of like hey are you going to continue offering you know wj long arms and bumpers and that kind of stuff because a lot of these companies they'll they'll move off into like the wrangler market or something like that and then oh, yeah. leave the unibody guys hanging and i'm like i mean that's that's the bread and butter for us that's where i came from like i'm not going to leave the <laughs> i'm not going to leave you guys hanging we're going to be building those parts for a long time yeah, that's good to hear. And if you guys didn't know, I run a bunch of the uh, I run a bunch of Trail Forge parts on my Jeep, and I've been happy with the quality. You guys send candy out with the orders too, so I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you had the company? Like, when did you guys start? Um, so Trail Forge started in 2017 uh, in my garage in Santa Rosa, California, um, and uh, I had an XJ project and. I didn't like any of the parts that I could get. So I started making my own. So do you have any previous welding experience? Yeah. So um, I did study engineering and welding in college um, and then have been tinkering around on my own projects for years. Um, so when I started in, you know, building components for, for my XJ back in uh, that project actually started back in about 2015. Um, I was doing all the fabricating work on that myself. Okay. And what, at what point did you move on towards, I guess, WJ? Since that's, I think, your main thing that you sell, right? For WJ? Yeah, yeah. So WJ's kind of became the big market. Um, so I had an XJ. It was my project Jeep. Um, and then I wanted to buy something that would be like a comfortable daily that was also not like a boring car that I could go mild wheeling in. 
Okay. And everybody's like, oh, you're going to modify it right away. And I'm like, nope, I'm going to drive it. I'm not going to touch it. And my first modification went on three weeks later. <laughs> and what was the first one? Uh, I went with a really basic three inch lift. Um, and right out of the gate, basically started absolutely wailing on that Jeep and started finding all of the issues with parts not being strong enough or not being designed well enough. And or not said, being well, on the market or not being on the market <laughs> at all. Right. Yeah. So that, that ended up becoming kind of the big market for me because I noticed there was, there, there's not a lot of people out there that make WJ components nor components at the level that I wanted to see them. So I decided I got to do it myself. What was the first product that you made for the WJs? Um, the very first product for the WJ was the, the HD Heim steering. Okay. Um, we found out on my Jeep. So I had a three inch lift, but I didn't want like the generic white body shocks. So I found some Fox BDS lift shocks that were like 10 inch travel. And when we were cycling everything, we found that 10 inch travel shocks would bind to stock steering at droop. And we're like, steering's got to go. And there wasn't really a good option on the market. And I was already building XJ steering. So I had all the parts and the components and the vendor and everything. Mm. So we spent a couple days, you know, developing a kit, prototyping it. And my, my daily driven WJ was what that got, you know, beat on and tested on. Okay. And you already, at that point, you're already selling XJ parts, like on the website yeah. or locally? Or yeah. Yeah. So the website was already up. That went up in September of 2017. Um, the very first products there was like the, the XJ time steering kit and a couple other little things. Um, and the WJ parts came pretty shortly after. Okay. And did you have any entrepreneurial like experience in the past or you just, that was, this is your first baby, I guess. Um, no, I, I'm kind of one of those, uh, I used to call myself kind of a serial entrepreneur. Like I dabbled to dip my feet in a bunch of things, starting all the way back at age about 16 or 17 oh wow uh, never really found something i was passionate about prior to doing that so while, while i was running the company up and starting it i had a, a my business my full-time job was um screen printing and fitness apparel and i had my whole printing set up next to my jeep in my garage and i was doing you know screen printing jobs for local breweries and all kinds of different stuff and while it was interesting, I wasn't, I wasn't really passionate about it. Okay. So I ended up selling that whole screen printing setup, my whole shop and, and investing in, you know, uh, tubing vendors and, and a bigger <laughs> welder and a lot of that kind of stuff from that business into, well, now I'm going to fabricate, you know, cheap parts. That sounds pretty cool. That's, that's a great, uh, I guess, transition because it's something that you already like and now you get a keep going on that right yeah yeah um and you know the, the old adage of like find something that you love and you'll never work a day in your life yeah um that's a lie <laughs> <laughs> but it does mean that you actually get to enjoy what you do and have a little bit more fun at it and it kind of aligns with your purpose a little bit more so you know we have hard days and we have drudgery and we have things that we have to do repetitively that's not exciting but ultimately, the end result is something that we're passionate about, something that we love doing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's what keeps us going. That's, that's amazing to hear. And I guess that's like a really motivating story for somebody that wants to start doing something like this, you know, get into oh. a, the Jeep world and be able to live off of it. Absolutely. And I mean, there are so many markets and so many niches and so many things that like, you know, and, and it's not necessarily, oh, I have to compete with all these other businesses. No. You know, in the WJ market, the OTA product, um, there wasn't anything like it in the market when I designed that. And it took a while for people to kind of understand why that was the superior route to, you know, the, the age old drop your pitman arm and do all that stuff. Oh, yeah. Um, but the once drop brackets. Yeah. Once yeah. that kind of knowledge was more widespread. The, the, the consumer market as a whole kind of started to be more educated on that. And I, I tried to, you know, utilize opportunities to, to explain and teach as much as possible. 
we sell more OTA brackets and OTA track bar kits than we do bolt-ins, probably about a 10 to one ratio. So that's like your, that's what brings in the, the cash flow for your business then. Um, steering kits in general and track bars, yes. You know, in the WJ markets, the, the ultimate kit that I sell that pairs the over the knuckle with the over the axle uh, track bar setup, uh, that's been a really, really big thing for us in the WJ market because nobody else has a product similar to that. And quite frankly, it has all the benefits without introducing new problems like drop bracketry does. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, you don't, you don't really want to run any drop brackets because those they tend to break and that's from what i've read that they tend to break they're not reliable so i guess the steering kit is i think it's it's worth it it's worth the investment it's worth a couple hundred bucks that you're going to spend on it for my yeah yeah and you started in california you recently moved are you from california or no i mean technically i'm from germany (laughs) oh germany okay (laughs) so um yeah, my dad, my dad's Air Force station in Germany. My mom's German, so I'm, mm-hmm. I'm dual citizen. Came over to the States at a young age and settled in California. Um, so mostly raised in the California area. Um, I did a, a short jaunt with the Army. So, yeah, I spent a little time in North Carolina and on the East Coast with the Army, 2011, 2012. But for the most part, I've lived the majority of my life in, in Northern California. Okay, and what, why is, what's the reason you moved to, I guess, Virginia is where you moved to? Yeah, so we're in um, kind of the western corner of Virginia, um, kind of very close to North Carolina and West Virginia. Mm. Uh, I've been looking at leaving California for a long time just due to, you know, the expense of operating a business there and a, and a bunch of issues and, that, and whatnot. Um, the driving force there really was... Um, meeting my fiance and she had just graduated medical school um and was was prepping to start a residency and her specialty uh this kind of corner of virginia there's a lot of really good residency options so we kind of ultimately we had a big map of the nation was like okay where can you get a good residency and where's going to be a good place you know simultaneously to relocate the business to and we settled on on Roanoke, Virginia. Okay, that makes sense. And that benefits both of you guys. And I'm sure the tax rate is a lot better over there. Um, the cost of buildings, I'm pretty sure it's cheaper too compared to California. So that, that seems like a great option. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, most of the expenses are significantly lower. Um, cost of living is significantly lower. There's a lot of benefits. And ultimately, that's that's giving us the leverage to grow and expand. Are you working by yourself or do you have employees? Um, so when we moved out to North Carolina, uh, when we moved out to Virginia, um, it was basically just me. Uh, I did have a fabricator from North Carolina who had come out to California to work with me uh, kind of in a apprentice type of a role for a while. Um, we had a good conversation. He's not too far away. Um, he lived about four hours away from where we were moving to. And basically the conversation was, well, do you want to come work for me full time? So once we got out here, um, about a month, month and a half after we moved, he relocated to the area and he's now our full-time fabricator. Okay. That's awesome. Um, and you still do fabrication yourself? I still do some of it. Um, most of the day-to-day operations, uh, Aaron does now, um, He's kind of taking over more and more of the of the fabrication department from me, if you will. Um, and uh, we're actually right now working with another friend of mine from California who's a Jeeper. They're out visiting this week, um, and they're going to be moving here, uh, both him and his wife, um, this spring. And he's going to come and pretty much take over the entire mechanical side of things from me. So, you know, installing lifts and vehicle maintenance and oh, that's awesome. uh, pretty much yeah. that kind of stuff that's that sounds really cool so you guys are expanding for sure um i do have some questions from instagram i have three of them so first one yeah. you, you kind of answered already what's the lead time on non on non-powder coated one ton wj steering kits um a bare steel one ton kit uh order it today say you ordered it today that would ship out probably end of this upcoming week 
Okay. Um, we just ran out of tube Friday, and we have a new. We have another five thousand pounds of it landing Tuesday. That's so. a lot. Five thousand pounds. <laughs> That's yeah. crazy. Damn. Okay. All right. Next question: Do they have specific measurements on the one ton steering for WJs? I'm not sure what that means, so I think we'll skip that one. <laughs> Unless you have <laughs> something to say about it. I think. I think the question is like what are the lengths of the die rod and the drag link? And honestly, I don't like giving like go shoot for this number because it's all different. There's so much. Yeah. There's so much variation vehicle to vehicle. Ultimately you kind of need to dial in toe is such a finite thing. It really needs to be set on the vehicle. Yeah. You can't, you can't just take a measurement. I measured my old one with the measuring tape, did it with the trail force and it wasn't it. Like I still needed it. That's it. So it's all, yeah. It's all custom to your Jeep, I guess. Um, yeah. The last question I have here, unless Paul has another one. Um, what's the first major suspension or other upgrade you would recommend for a WJ? I like to say begin with the end in mind. Yeah. And what I mean by that is if you put on a budget boost and then you take it out and put on three inch lift springs and then you take it out and put on four and a half inch lift springs and then, oh wait, my steering doesn't work. So you change your steering. And then you take it out and you put some, you're going to end up spending way more time and money than if you start with the question, where do I want this to end? And how, what does that build look like? Yeah, I agree with you so, 100%. Yeah, my WJ went from like a basic three inch lift to the very next step was long arms, bumper, winch, everything, um, because I knew the direction it wanted to go. So realistically, if it's budget boost street driven not really going to be driven a whole lot and that's it period ever you know adjustable short arms some decent shocks mm -hmm. you know that kind of stuff and i would stop there but if the plan is to go big at some point like skip doing adjustable short arms save up and drop a long arm kit on it you know our long arm kit works at a three inch lift okay so you know and that'll save you multiple steps in the middle that ultimately end up costing you a lot of money so I started off with budget boost and I just ended up saving for a whole year just so I could buy the lift kit that I have now, which is Iron Rock control arms, um, your steering kit, rusty springs. It's just have the, you're right. Like you're going to end up spending so much more money if you do small and then go towards the bigger end later on. It just yeah. doesn't make sense. Just save the money for a year like I did. <laughs> <laughs> right. right. Paul, you have any questions for him? I just want to echo what you just said because I totally had the same experience. I ended up not starting the way I should have and, and went the route and spent way more money. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I sold that Jeep because my wife didn't like it and then I bought this one. <laughs> so. If you're in the market for Trail Forge parts, go on their website right now. They have a lot of stuff discounted. So pick it up now before the price goes back to normal. A lot of great information. Trail Forge is back in stock. Go on their website, support them. They also have a Facebook page for Trail Forge owners. Um, so if you have any questions on installing parts, you can ask there. Um, Sean sometimes replies as well. So that's a good place to, to talk 